Society of the United States Daughters of 1812 sends her regrets that she could not attend today. She did send us the following message. When the Georgia Daughters of 1812 and her honored guests travel to the Macmillan Family Cemetery, the appreciation of our entire National Society is sent to each of you as you gather at the gravesite to honor the War of 1812 veteran, Private John Macmillan. Thank you for making the journey to Dekula and the Sacred Family Cemetery to pay tribute to a soldier of the War of 1812. Now, she thought it wasn't going to rain, so. All right. At this time, would all members of the National Society of the United States Daughters of 1812 please stand? This includes members who serve as National Committee Chairman, State Officers, Chairman and members of the General John Clark Chapter, and their officers and chairmen. You'll hear more about these special organizations as we do the re presentation. We have some very special guests that are here from other lineage organizations that will be recognized at that time as well. Okay. All right, Hugh, it's your turn to talk about the life of John Well, I guess we'll start with uh, five shiploads starting out of Belfast, Ireland. Uh, originally, the, uh, the oldest one, a man named John McMillan, Reverend John McMillan, who was uh, trained a man by the name of Reverend William Martin. And William Martin uh, arranges for five shiploads to uh, leave Belfast. And they did, and they left in the October of uh, 1772. And they took about 65 days, a little more than 65 days, to make the voyage. Uh, in that group was uh, the grandfather of John McMillan, a man named Daniel McMillan. And he is buried in Charlestown, South Carolina. They call it Charlestown originally. And uh, he died around uh, 1787 during the occupation of uh, Charleston during the Revolutionary War. Uh, the father of John was born around 1754. His name was Samuel, and he became uh, a revolutionary soldier. The ship they came from was uh, named the Hopewell. And uh, there was several brothers of Samuel McMillan, and his name was Reverend Peter. And he uh, graduated from the University of Glasgow, Scotland, and was ordained at A. Aog Hill, I guess is the way you pronounce it. And, and he graduated in the year 1781. And then he finally comes on to U.S. South Carolina with the rest of them. They arrived in U.S. somewhere around 1772. Reverend Peter finally comes on later on in 1798 and donates 75 acres in due west South Carolina, which is just 25 miles from Elberton, Georgia. And uh, that 75 acres becomes a college, and it's still in force today, called Erskine College. Erskine Presbyterian College. Uh, he spoke a good bit at several old uh, churches, uh, Long Cane Creek, Rocky Creek, and due west. And uh, those churches are still there today quite big churches now. Samuel and uh, Peter, Reverend Peter and James and Archibald, they all were enumerated in around 1790 uh, and they were living on the Chickasaw Creek near New West, South Carolina. Samuel, he goes ahead and serves in the Revolutionary War from 1777 to 1782 under Colonel Lieutenant, <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Francis Marion. You know him as a swamp farmer. And uh, he served several years at Fort Sullivan, 
and that fort is in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. We sometimes call it Fort Moultrie. And be sure to take that uh, museum there because it's a national park there in Charleston. It's really something to see. Uh, John's father, Samuel marries a, a lady by the name of Margaret Elizabeth Jolly, and she's from Burkesville, Kentucky. So I don't know where this South Carolina man meets this uh, Kentucky woman, but they have uh, three children. Peter Edward, who became big in politics in Jackson County, Georgia. And that's a whole nother two-day story. <laughs> and John, he uh, and Anna locate here. I believe this property would be her father's big property. Her father was the first inferior court judge in Gwinnett County, Georgia. Uh, and he was instrumental in determining where the courthouse in Gwinnett would be, where uh, the first four roads would be, and what direction they would take. And uh, the path where you'd have the least number of bridges and bodies of water to cross. And Margaret was the uh, third child, and she marries Reverend Edward Paul, P-H-A-R-R. -R. 